Hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, today we are going to review, you know it, money. So you guys started the week off with a worksheet counting coins and counting bills. Um, and today we are going to review that concept just one more time. Um, even though I know all of you seem to be pretty good with money, I hope. Because all I hear is you saying, just give me my money, right? So I'm hoping if you say this phrase, you know how to count money. And if not, I found a really cool video, not as cool as Miss G's videos, of course, but a really cool and helpful video about money that I want us to look at. And then we are going to talk a little bit about it. And then you guys are going to practice. So let's take a look at this video about money. Please make sure you are paying attention. It says it's for second grade. So for third graders, it should be easy to pay attention to and understand. Let's watch together. Sue is heading to the store to get some pet treats. But first, she needs to crack open her piggy bank to get some of her money. Sue has a lot of different types of money in her piggy bank. Here is a penny. This is the head of a penny, and this is the tail. The head of a coin means the front, and the tail of a coin means the back. A penny is worth one cent. We can write one cent with a cents symbol like this, or with a dollar symbol like this. This one is easy to identify because it is copper, not silver like the other coins. Here is a nickel. It is the medium sized silver coin and also a little thicker. A nickel is worth five cents and is written using a cents symbol or a dollar symbol. A cents symbol looks like a C with a line through it. A dollar sign looks like a capital S with a line through it. This is a dime. A dime is worth 10 cents and can be written like this. It is the smallest silver coin. The last type of coin that Sue has is called a quarter. A quarter is worth 25 cents. This one is the largest silver coin. I like the eagle that it usually has on the back. Sue also has some dollar bills. This is the front and the back of a dollar bill. A dollar bill is worth one dollar and can be written only with a dollar sign like this. Now we are going to see some different combinations of coins. If you want to go get some coins of your own to use, go ahead and pause this video to get some. We'll wait. Um, you're not doing this. <laughs> Sue promised her little brother she would give him some money for gum at the store. Here are the coins she gave him. One way to count up all the coins is to find the total value of each coin type and add them. Let's try that. So I want you on your own to try and count this money. Okay. Um, don't shout it out. Just do it in your head. I'm going to count to, I'm going to count to 25 and I want you to try to see if you can count this, these coins. Okay. And figure out what the total is before they reveal it. All right, let's see what they come up with. To start, there is one quarter, which is 25 cents. Next, count the dimes. There are three dimes. Since a dime is worth 10 cents, we can skip count by tens to find out how much the three dimes are worth. 10, 20, 30. These dimes are worth 30 cents altogether. Let's count the nickels now. There are two nickels. Each nickel is worth five cents, so two nickels are worth 10 cents, since five plus five equals 10. Lastly, there are two pennies. Each penny is worth one cent, so two pennies are worth two cents. We have 25 cents, 30 cents, 10 cents, and two cents. Let's add up these amounts to find the total value. 25 plus 30 is 55. We can find that by skip counting up by tens. 25, 35, 45, 55. 55 plus 10 is 65. And 65 plus 2 is 67. So kind of what they did, the answer is 67. And what they did 
was they sorted them by coins and you can totally do that. Now Miss G is going to hopefully get you guys to the point of doing it Miss G way, which is like this, right? Miss G knows her money. That's why she can say, give me my money because she knows her money. I always start like they did by identifying the largest coin, which was the quarter. So in my head, I would do 25 and then I'm gonna find my dimes and then I'm gonna do, and I know they're worth 10, right? So 25, 35, 45, 55, and now I'm gonna move on to my nickels and those are worth five. So 55, 60, 65, nothing else. So then I count my two singles, 66, 67. So you could also hopefully do it that way. If you need to move it around like they just did, that's totally fine too, but it is 67 cents. Now let's see what this Sue girl is doing. She's got, she's spent her money. She's got some shopping habits. Here's what she is taking. Let's figure out how much money Sue is taking. She had. So, uh, never mind. I was gonna have you count it, but this thing keeps popping up, so don't worry about it. It's $5 bills. That is $5 to start. Now, let's set those aside as we count up all the coins. Oftentimes, it is easiest to start with the coins that have the largest value. That's the quarter, so let's start there. There are two quarters. Each quarter is worth 25 cents, so that is 50 cents, since 25 plus 25 is 50. The next largest value is the dime. That is 10 cents each, and there are six of them. Let's skip count by tens to find the total value of the dimes. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. These dimes are worth 60 cents. Then there are the nickels. There are three nickels, so skip count by fives to find the value of the nickels. Five, 10, 15. These nickels are worth 15 cents. Finally, there are four pennies. Since each penny is worth one cent, that is four cents altogether. Let's add up the value of all the coins. First, we have 50 cents and 60 cents. Together, that makes 110 cents. Then add 15 cents to get 125 cents. Finally, add four cents to get 129 cents. That's a lot of cents. You probably don't hear many people talk about more than 100 cents at a time. That's because once you have reached 100 cents, you have a whole dollar. One dollar equals 100 cents. That's a lot of cents. So we can subtract 100 from 129 and add that dollar of coins to our $5 bills. That leaves us with 29 cents. So we have the $5 from the bills one dollar from the coins and 29 cents from the coins together that makes six dollars and 29 cents we can write that like this six dollars and 29 cents so let's kind of backtrack a little by what he just did right so because when you guys added and you got 129 cents right that's the same like you said 100 cents is equal to a dollar so that's equal to one dollar and 29 cents, right? So if she had one, two, three, four, five dollar bills, now she has another dollar, so six dollars and 29 cents. That's where he got that from. So she has a dollar in coins plus what was left, which was 29 cents. That's where this extra dollar came from. You would never write your cents, like if you have anything over the way he said it, right? People don't talk like that. So you're never going to write 129 cents, that would never be an answer. If I ever ask you to add up the coins and you write, and it reaches over 100 and you would write it like this, or with the cent sign, if you ever wrote it, I'm sorry, let me show this picture. If you ever wrote anything like this, I would mark it wrong. We don't write it that way, okay? That would technically be wrong. You would need to, if you have anything over 100, you absolutely need to write it in this format. So you would write it, I keep going back and forth. I should just stay here. That 129 cents, if we were just talking about this number here, whoa, that's a big, that's a big chungus. If we're talking about that there, this 
would turn into, you just move the period, the decimal point over two. One, two, when you're talking about money, this would be one dollar period and 29 cents. And you wouldn't have the cent sign. Now we're talking about there's a dollar in there, so you would have the one dollar and 29 cents. I would never, ever accept an answer like that. Okay, that would be marked as incorrect. Girl, Sue, why are you making that face? What are you even doing? Let's see, what is Sue doing now? You know that a dollar bill is worth one dollar, a quarter is worth 25 cents, a dime is worth 10 cents, a nickel is worth five cents, and a penny is worth one cent. You have learned strategies for counting up coins of different values. Period. So, make sure that you guys are remembering and studying and practicing your coins um, in the best, in the, I mean, as much as possible. If you ever, if you get to go home and play around with them, um, that'd be a fun game for you to even do if your parents are, are you know, around or friends or siblings. Um, if you have coins laying around, um, lay them out in front of you and play games like um, who can say how many nickels there are first go you know um, and see or see who can count the money fastest go um, take away money put money in um, practicing money is not only important for math but guys it's a life skill you need to know how to count money okay I know in your age there's a lot of credit cards there's a lot of um, Apple pay and things like that um, you never know when the Wi-Fi is going to decide to just go out, right? And then it's going to be back down to dollar bills and you guys aren't going to know how to count them. Uh, you're not going to be 20 years old and some guy's going to take, you know, all 20 of your dollar bills when he should only have 12 because you don't know how to count change. You're going to get robbed that way. All right. Please learn how to count money. Once, once again, it Queen is a of the life. largest. Ooh. I'm talking, sir. It is a life skill, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and so for your next assignment, you are going to be practicing more with money. You are going to be doing some real world, real word, world problems. Okay, so your assignment's gonna look something like this. Um, remember, if you're writing 325 cents as dollars, it's not going to turn. In, you're gonna change the cent sign, right? Four dollars and eighty-three cents. How would that look, right? Um, you're going to be counting some coins. Then we're going to have, once again, some real world problems. We're talking about if Tina has $5.25, she wants to buy a toy that costs $7.50, does she have enough money? You would tell me either yes or no. And then you would tell me if she doesn't have enough money, how much more does she need? Okay, same thing here. Carlos wants to buy two items, a book for this price and a snack for this price. Does he have enough money if he has $7? So first you would figure out how much it costs all together and figure out if he has enough money. And when it says explain your answer, I want words. Yes, he has enough money because blah, blah, blah. No, he doesn't have enough money because blah, blah, blah. This is how much more he needs or this is how much more he has left, whatever the case is. But I need you to answer the questions and give me what they're asking if it says explain i need some words here all right best of luck ladies and gentlemen you guys can do this um and i will see you soon